What's up, everybody? Welcome! Thank you, One Fog Machine, to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Monday, April 8th, 2024. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside Forbes 30 Under 30, a.k.a. the second best baby blues in San Francisco, a.k.a. the New York Times quoted at Tim Gettys. Let's Tim host. <sighs> what a Monday, Greg. Have what a Monday. Down? Have you come down? I have not come down. Yeah. The last couple days have been a lot to take in. And I cannot wait to unleash, to talk about everything that we saw, everything that we got to experience, specifically with you. Yeah. Because I didn't get to hear too many of your thoughts yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. I sent you some top level. Why didn't they have more fucking confetti last night? What the fuck's going on? Yeah, there's always the confetti problem. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, WrestleMania was this weekend. Night one, night two, the Hall of Fame on Friday, a SmackDown. There's a Raw after Mania tonight, a million independent shows, the Slammies, Stand and Deliver. There was so much wrestling in Philadelphia this very weekend. Uh, before we went live and before we had some technical difficulties, uh, Wolf Fox over in the chat said, please let the first 15 minutes be Greg talking about wrestling. I can do you one better. Right after this episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily, we are are starting the live stream of video games with us recording our kind of funny screencast recapping and talking about WrestleMania. It will be me. It will be Tim. It will be Mike. It will be Roger, I assume. Oh, yeah. And that's everybody. That's everybody. All four of us just talking for hours. If you are listening later or watching later at Kind of Funny Games Daily, of course, you can get that on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny. And of course, the Kind of Funny screencast feed wherever mm -hmm. you get your podcasts. Maybe you say, I don't care about that episode, but I didn't know about the screencast. Go ahead still. Like, subscribe, share. Do all that jazz. Because screencast... Y'all have asked for it, and I, I, I light promised it, but now I can confirm promised it. And we, we will are be reviewing doing... every WrestleMania. No. Because <laughs> of the success we saw. <laughs> no, we not that. Invincible. Season two. This week will happen. Really excited about this. Very excited about that. Shout out to you, Mara. You made it happen. Mara made that happen? Mm -hmm. Wow. Because you never heard about Invincible until her, apparently. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm some Greg Miller erasure here. I'm here having to beg people to watch shows to talk about them. So, okay, Greg, don't give me shit. Did you watch it yet? No, I haven't watched it yet. I had to watch fucking seven and a half hours of WrestleMania this weekend. Yeah. We can't all be like you. With taste. <laughs> True. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's instead talk about Xbox moving full steam ahead on next gen. Fallout season two likely happening. And so much more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about live on YouTube, Twitch, and podcast services around the globe. If you like what you see or hear, hey, the best way to support us in the independent operation of 11 people in San Francisco is the Kind of Funny membership. Over on Patreon or YouTube, you can get the Kind of Funny membership and you can get each and every episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily ad-free. Of course, you get all of our other shows ad-free. You can watch us record the afternoon podcast live as we record them. And of course, you can get the daily multimedia experience known as Gregway in your eyes and ears only with the Kind of Funny membership. Thank you for your support. Mm -hmm. Of course, if that wasn't good enough, you could. Help us right now when you're watching live with YouTube Super Chats. Of course, YouTube Super Chats come on in, and we include them in the show as questions, comments, and concerns. So go ahead and do that. Housekeeping for you. In case you missed it, a new game showdown is up, and it features Tamor, Janet, and Imran over on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games, and of course, on the Kind of Funny Game Showdown podcast feed. I have it on good authority. It was a slobber knocker. Oh, my episode. gosh, a slobber knocker? Mm -hmm. I would expect no less with Imran, Janet, and Tamor. You know what I mean? I'm sure Tamor clean, clean their clocks, though. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because exactly. Imran only knows weird Final Fantasy stuff. Janet mm -hmm. only knows indie stuff. Mm -hmm. Tamor knows everything. He knows it all. He knows it all. He does. We're reacting, like I said, to WrestleMania right after this. Twitch, YouTube, live, later on the Screencast podcast feed. Uh, thank you to our Patreon producers, Carl Jacobs, Kieran Hovisapian, and Delaney Twining. Today, we're brought to you by Factor, Dragon's Dogma 2, and Robin Hood. But we'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin the show with what is... And forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> Time for some news. <laughs> Six <laughs> items on the Roper Report. A baker's dozen! What was going on there, Greg? I like to keep Kevin yeah, okay, on his toes. Okay, okay. Kevin's one of my favorite guys to work with. You know what uh -huh. I mean? We never know what the other's going to do. Yeah. We're out here dancing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just here watching you dance. Yeah, you're, it's like it's like the end of Batman 89, right? Of course. And I'm the Joker. Mm -hmm. He's Vicky Vale, and you're Batman. And yeah. I'm dancing him around. You know what I mean? And you're just waiting for your time to strike. You don't come help as soon as you can. Mm -hmm. You're watching a bit. 89 Batman. What are we talking about? You know what I mean? Remember that in Batman interview? 
I do. Remember when you sold that Rock one up the river Robin. too? Man who only has tastes, he says. Yeah. Y'all be tripping about 1989 Batman. Things about it are amazing. If it isn't and fucking a four-second video of a cat fart and Tim doesn't like it, that's his it's generation. It's true. I digress. Let's go. Okay. Number one on the Roper Report. Xbox is moving full steam ahead on next-gen consoles. This is Ryan Dinsdale at IGN. Microsoft is moving, quote, full speed ahead on its next-generation console. An internal email from Xbox president Sarah Bond has revealed. <coughs> The email, obtained by Windows Central and verified to be genuine by Microsoft, announced, um, also announced the formation of a game preservation team at Xbox. Very cool. Quote, We are moving full speed ahead on our next generation hardware, focused on delivering the biggest technological leap ever in a generation, Bond said, reiterating comments made in February when the console's existence was, was officially announced. No further information was shared regarding the hardware itself, nor when fans might be able to buy it. But documents leaked in 2023 suggested Microsoft plans to release the next Xbox in 2028. That's a year that doesn't sound real. No, it doesn't that, sound real. That at all. doesn't sound yeah. real at all. Yeah, 2025. It's like, okay. 90s, sure. we're talking about 2020. You're uh -huh. like, I can envision that. Uh -huh. 2028. I think that might be the line, <laughs> the line where it's like anything before that, I'm like, I can, I get it kind of. But yeah, yeah 2027. 20, you're like, all right, okay, cool. yeah, yeah, I yeah. Can, oh, movies were announced for that year. You're like, all right, that's crazy, but I get it. 2028, wow. No. Mm -mm, get out of here. We won't make it that Sarah far. Sarah Bond, delete these informations. Uh, regardless, with Microsoft seemingly making its development a priority, it will likely be available sooner rather than later. Alongside it, looking to the future, Xbox also appears, appears committed to past and present. Quote, we have formed a new team dedicated to game preservation, important to all of us at Xbox and the industry itself, Bond said in the email. We are building on our strong history of delivering backwards compatibility to our players, and we remain committed to bringing forward the amazing library of Xbox games for future generations of players to enjoy, end quote. Obviously, lot to talk <laughs> about here, Greg. But what I do want to start with is a very classic Tim broken record thing. Oh, shit. I've always been so impressed with Xbox's uh, focus on backwards compatibility and the way that they not only are backwards compatible, but they're forward thinking. They're always trying to enhance the old games so that they run how they should run, but just better. All the new fancy bells and whistles that Xbox has added, you can then use in older games. And I've always been so impressed by it working. Like, it just works, and if a game is available, chances are it's in 4K. Chances are it has some type of frame rate boost because they've invested in that type of uh, technology, and they they looked at it as if it was important, something that PlayStation has not done and others have not done. Mm -hmm. So it's really great to be able to play old Xbox games on new Xbox consoles, and this has went back to even Xbox One X, so last generation, yeah. right, uh, of being able to do this, and it's I've always been so impressed by it. Uh, to the point that even like Sonic Generations, I forget what it's called, but Sonic Generations Shadow Adventure or whatever the hell, the new one that's kind of coming out. Slash, you're wrong. That's essentially like a uh, a remaster of of that game. They're adding content and stuff too. Like it's almost unnecessary because on Xbox, it's already doing all the fancy 4K, 16, yeah, yeah, all yeah, that yeah. stuff. So it's like very impressive that they've been able to to do this so consistently. And I think it's even better that they're continuing to value it this much that they're talking about their next generation 2028 but in the same breath as hey we're doing this team and it's important to keep this going because um the efforts are are paying off to them like i'm happy that the, they are seeing whatever success return that they need to be able to keep doing this stuff sure and i agree but i look at this and perhaps you know for the record of course anybody who's watching this probably knows and i know you know better than anybody tim because you're always trying to lead me a horse to water, and I yes. just refuse to drink it, right? Mm -hmm. Of bells, whistles, information, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. To sit here and have this email that's internal, but says, you know, delivering the biggest technological leap in, ever in a generation. Okay. So what, does that mean it'll finally be able to do 4K60? No, 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 no. I mean, we're, si we're sitting here. We're si last week, you just well, said Hellblade it can't run 30 frames, or is running 30 frames per second on your current Xbox, not on PC. Yeah. How are you inspiring people to buy consoles? I mean, I don't. I think that those days are over of, it be, of things working that way. And hey, guess what? I've said this so fucking many times. We're just everything is congealing into 
it all has to work between this level and this level because it doesn't you don't know if you're playing on a phone you don't know if you're playing on the sure. on you know the most insane graphics cards ever so it's like i feel like the more people want the different modes it's going to cause more and more problems on the console side of things obviously pc is a different story and has been forever and that's why you see the successes and failures of pc gaming where it does work better when it works and it does have more problems when there's problems because there's a lot more uh things at play that could get in the way of the game just running the way it's supposed to yeah the biggest technological leap ever in a generation ah oh, man it's just i i almost wish that like this wasn't something we're talking about because like who cares like the, I, I feel like it's the type of thing don't get caught up in these words because for what that actually means to the end consumer yeah right like we look at game generations and we're like, all right, cool. I know the difference between <laughs> NES. Like we're never going to see something like SNES to PS1 again. Yeah, yeah. You know? So because of that, I feel like we're not going to get that instant gratification of understanding. The biggest technological leap ever is going to be a whole bunch of back end stuff, bigger flops, bigger giga this and that and whatever. Things that we don't actually know or care about. And we're not yeah, going to be a couple able- of load times where always we care about them. What's up? Load times. Yeah, but you could say like whatever. I feel like you can't just look at a game they can't talk about it and we can't watch a trailer and sure. be like, oh, I, I get what, what's happening here. I feel like we're just hitting this point that everything is, it looks so damn good that it's not until we get a press release later that we see the bad news of like, oh, well, it's only 30 or it's this or it's that. Or there's always weird concessions that-, that Can I ask a question? Made. Yes. Crush Lemons in the chat says, you're not getting 4K60 on a $500 console. You need a good PC to do that. Do yeah. you agree with that? Because that sounds a lot like back in the day when it was like, oh, you want to burn a CD? You need to buy this $1,500 thing. You'll never be able to burn a CD anywhere else. Does well, the technology no. drop in price and all this so other stuff? So here's the thing. No. Like, 4K60 is, as a standard for all games, like just not going to happen anytime soon unless there is very, very smart adoption of this AI tech that a lot of the big <sighs> dogs have been pushing and have been finding great success with. All of it starting with the uh nvidia dlss stuff like that there is real major wins there that it might be a a like simulated 4k but at the yeah, end yeah, of the day yeah. if cares? it doesn't matter to the human eye it doesn't matter we're back right? to matrix right when the guy's eating the steak and he's like i know this isn't real steak but it's steak and i like steak so i mean i think we can even look at it and just be like you know 1080p 60 is not standard to this day <laughs> right yeah and it, for most games it is but not all and i feel like that um there's always going to be those concessions because as the resolution goes up and the frame rate goes up, I mean, at a, we're already kind of at a point that uh, 60 is not the, the hot new thing anymore. Sure. You know? Oh, yeah. 100%. Right. And he has a 244 hertz monitor now that like he's using with a lot of VRR, variable refresh rate stuff, which PlayStation and Xbox are pushing as like features on the box in the same way that 8K is there, which is absolutely ridiculous at this point. But uh, technically, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah it's. Th- I think that the AI stuff is going to be the biggest answer to how this is going to be the biggest technological leap ever. Um, and I think that we will see it like it, it's going to uh, enhance and help a lot of games. But at the end of the day, like the, these games are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And these features are are in some ways getting in the way, I think, because they're not going to be able to keep up with the rising resolution and the rising frames per second sure. and the demands of the the hardcore tech side of people so they need to guess what just put out games good game shocking yeah. shocking you know i think when this comes around the reason it makes headlines is the even though it's successful waning console market right we are seeing pcs be adopted by more and more people uh, be a preferred way to play games etc and so on right does it shock you that Xbox is still going for hardware? That they're still going no. to make a box? I mean, I don't know that I agree even with what you just said about the waning console market. I do think that there was more people going into PCs, but like uh, there was some numbers dropped fairly recently about um, how many Steam decks have been sold. Sure. And it's impressive, but it's not nearly as like industry shaking as I feel I have even thought it was in the last couple of years. But I do think all of that is building a case for PC gaming, whether it's on the go with something like the the Steam Deck or the, the Legion or whatever, all those different ones, yeah. um, the the Roger Ally. Um, <laughs> then there's just Steam in general, PC gaming, and then there's the cloud side of it one day, whatever. Um, I feel like it's not affecting console sales. Like, I don't, I don't think it's in place of, I don't think that the people are going to not buy an Xbox. Well, Xbox is actually a weird example there, but like not buy a PlayStation because they're, PC gamers. I feel like there is still that 
understanding and demand for console gaming that I don't see going away anytime soon. Like, I feel like that's going to be the easiest way for people to understand playing video games as video games for the next, I mean, at least generation, but I would not be surprised two generations. Um, and I think that there is, we've had this conversation a lot recently about like the future of gamers of like one, our generations kind of start to really get a lot older than we already are. And the kids, what are they playing? Like, are, like the Roblox players, yeah, the Fortnite, the Minecraft, all of that. Are they in all these other freaking skibbity do bebop games? All the shit that like, like people, the things that are all up. just at the bottom of the TikToks I'm watching. Yeah, it's like, are they going to be buying consoles? Do they care about that stuff? Well, that was know. the big report recently. That no, they're not. Yeah, that the the younger generations are the ones who are going. Oh, I'm just gonna stay with the PC. It does everything I need. Yeah. Why would I go buy a box that I have to then spend money to do this thing, do whatever? But I feel like while that might be true, I think that there are more people of our generation that are buying consoles than ever before. So it's I don't think actually going to affect the console sales for a very long time. At some point, there might come that convergence point. But I, I feel like console sales are not down, you know, uh, and I, I do think that they're in an interesting place now as we're talking about 2028 for this next gen Xbox, um, which sounds far, but also... I mean, that would be eight years since the yeah. Series X, yeah. um, which is wild. It doesn't really feel that way. It doesn't feel like Series X has really got going yet. But I think that we also just need to be realistic about where things are. Like, what we're getting out of the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, that's where games are at. Like, I don't think that we're ever going to get what we had before of generations having these, like, titles that are <laughs> uniquely on them and that's it. I think everything is getting to this point where cross gen, cross whatever. Like I expect more and more and more of that. Where when we get this next Xbox, I bet you so many of the games are going to be cross gen with Xbox Series X. If not, just part of it. If not, this next gen just being a continued platform for Xbox that they've flirted with and kind of started already doing. But um, with the rumors of the the Pro system or whatever the hell it is on the PlayStation side this year, and then also the Xbox side, it's. People are going to be really upset. I'm like, why do I need this? I don't need, like, we're not even making use of the, the system we have now. It's like, oh, I think they are. I think that's, I think we're where they're going to be. And that could upset people. But I just think that it's reality. It'll upset people and we'll stop them from buying it. That's yeah. the biggest thing, right? Like the people, the market will speak and people continue to buy this. We saw with the PlayStation Pro, right? We saw this with the Xbox it, uh, mid-generation refresh. Like you can be like, who's this for? But then you see the bells, the whistles, whatever it adds. And then of course you start looking at year one. And they're looking real, real stanky, ain't you? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you don't want this thing anymore. You want to get to the sexier, better, cooler device. Yeah. Especially if it's going to get more for your games out of it. And I mean, I know I'm that type of person. I'm yeah. a sucker for that shit. I'm yeah. an enthusiast for things. And I know that that isn't great. But I also know that I'm don't, I don't represent the majority of the audience out there. I do think there's a lot of people that are like, cool, there's a new PS5 out. I don't have a PS5 yet. I'm going to get the cheaper old one. And they're totally fine yeah, with that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, So I, it's going to be really interesting, man. Like, especially on the Xbox side, of, uh, if, them, if they do end up releasing a pro system this year, I feel like it presents a pretty compelling marketing argument on their side because in contrast to PlayStation, who do not have a big temple game this year, in theory, Xbox are kind of lining up a nice little calendar between Hellblade and Indiana Jones and all the things in between. Like, with their summer uh, game showcase this year, I feel like they have more than ever between Bethesda and uh, Activision Blizzard and Xbox themselves to be able to really pad things out. And Greg Miller, dominoes might start God damn, falling. are these dominoes <laughs> finally lined up and ready to go? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's it's Xbox's strategy has been interesting for a long time, and we'll see how it pays off. Yeah, where again, like, to chase the cloud, to chase Game Pass, to chase, you know, as Phil always talks about, trying to meet you on whatever screen you're on. I think that's the power of Xbox. And so, yeah, to give you an option that is... It's your phone. It's the cloud. It is the sexiest, biggest, most technologically advanced box of all time. Cool. That works. That that serves an audience that I'm sure we all are in some way, the people who are watching them. And I just think it's like backed up by this idea of game preservation, which isn't just lip service. We've seen them put it into action, and when you start combining the value of Xbox, which is the ecosystem, which is xCloud, which is Game Pass, which is being able to have your account that you've had since back in the day follow you with your gamer score and with everything, your library, 
that in the future, no matter what generation you're playing on, you're going to be able to play all your old games with your old save mm-hmm. files, mm-hmm. with faster mm-hmm. loading, better resolution, more frames, all that stuff. And they've already proven that they're doing that. It's not like, ah, we'll see it when we get there type thing. It's like, no, I believe it. Like, why wouldn't I? I'd be stupid not to. Yeah, they've done a great job with all of that and building an ecosystem and like you're talking about save files and backwards compatibility and the preservation and stuff. Like Xbox is making, as we said, somebody's like, it's not working so far. And like, that's the funny thing about Domino's. They don't work until they start tipping over and everybody goes, <laughs> yeah. oh, that's a great thing. Well, they want to say that about Domino's, but you understand the, the analogy. That's a great I'm making thing. Here. They did it. Yeah, you the know Domino's I mean? fell. <laughs> uh, I got some super chats here for you. All right. Right. Uh, Street Shadow says, I think Xbox confirmed they are not doing a pro, that they're likely just doing a digital Series X. We'll see. I mean, we, there was those uh, leaked images or whatever. I don't, I don't know if they were leaked or if they were fake or what they were, but there was images that looked like a all-white Series X with no disk drive. Um, and in some ways, it looked silly. And in others, it would look perfect in my in your theater. House. Yeah, so, exactly. Where all your um, but yeah, but I mean, that's the thing is like, yeah, I, I wouldn't, we're going to get a bunch of different things, I think. And like with all the rumors of the handheld as well, like I, there, there's been ebbs and flows of Xbox handheld rumors for generations at this point. Uh, but with where we're at now, I just think it means something different. I, I think it's inevitable that we get an Xbox handheld. I don't think it's going to be um, something at all. We're never going to get a handheld again that's like the Vita or a Game Boy or something that it's like games are being specifically made for this thing. Thank God. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I mean, you look at the the Switch compared to the Wii U and 3DS. It's just like, man, dope library, dope library, almost, almost combine it together on the Switch. Amazing library. Yeah. And I feel like that argument can be made. Uh, I mean, look at the Vita. Like for the handful of amazing games it had, all of those games were better served when they came to other platforms or they died there. <laughs> you know? Sure. Uh, one more for you here. Uh, CJ splits on pops in and says, will the next naughty dog game be 60 frames a second? I mean, I don't think so. I think that they'll probably be a mode that lets you do that. Um, but I, I feel like naughty dog games are made to, for the resolution. They're made for that 4k cinematic fidelity mode right yep. you can then play it uh in in better frames and like lower quality and like naughty dog has been i think pretty damn good about optimizing that stuff yeah they always um, have the bells and whistles and the remasters and the stuff like that where they're trying to make the look as good as run as good yeah as they can. but i mean even last of us 2 like when it came out on ps4 like it, it had the different modes and like they were impressive um they just weren't you know the best things ever but also that's because that game was one of the most demanding high fidelity things we've ever seen in gaming so uh, it's, I, I look at Insomniac as like, I don't know how they pull off the magic that they do. Yeah. Cause they, they typically now for, at least this was true for Ratchet and, um, Spider-Man, Spider-Man and I think for Miles as well, um, where there was the, maybe not at launch, but soon after launch, there's the three different modes where there's mm-hmm. performance fidelity. And then there is that like art, ray traced performance, which I do think kind of, uh, Gives you most of the bells and whistles uh, because like resolution for a game like that isn't necessarily the most important thing because of the speed of, at which you're moving and everything. And like uh, seeing the shiny reflections and stuff is pretty and it kind of tricks your brain into it looking better than it actually <laughs> yeah, does yeah. Um, while still looking amazing. Uh, <laughs> and if an action game like that playing at 60, I think, is a lot more important than it is for something a little bit slower like a last of us there's exceptions to that too even in gameplay moments for that game but yeah it's uh i don't think we're ever going to get to a point where there is a standard that everybody's just happy with that all new triple a games are coming out gamers happy it'll never happen it just won't and i I just feel like the tech just we're always chasing the next thing so it's like because of that everything's gonna always have to be a little bit behind well maybe the gamers We'll be happy with the new Fallout TV series launching this week. But for now, let's move on to story number two. Amazon's Fallout to film second season in California with $25 million in tax credits. This is Gene Maddox over at Variety. Uh, Fallout, the new post-apocalyptic series debuting this week on Amazon Prime, is expected to relocate to California for its second season thanks to a $25 million uh, California tax credit. The California Film Commission announced Monday that it has awarded $152 million in tax incentives to a dozen TV shows. The first season of Fallout was produced mostly in New York, with some filming in Utah. California's tax incentive is largely geared towards luring away TV shows that have already started production in another state or overseas. 
Such shows get a credit worth 25% of their qualified expenditures and also get 20% in every subsequent season. Even when a show has been out that has been allocated tax credits uh, to move to California, uh, that does not guarantee that it will actually do so. A year ago, Amazon was awarded $25 million to relocate the second season of Citadel to California. However, the show was later withdrawn from the program, and the money has been put back in the general pool for other shows. It's been reported that filming will begin. It's been reported that the show will begin filming its second season in September in Toronto. This tax credit stuff always confuses the hell out of me, and it just really? seems so freaking weird that uh, that's a thing that <clears throat> exists at a, lo- a scale of $25 million for this. It's sure. just like, wow, well, yeah, this doesn't seem like it possibly could be worth it, but I'm sure it is because it happens all the time. Yeah. I think really the news here is Fallout Season 2. Yeah. Uh, they yeah, believe yeah, yeah. it in enough already, which I think is a good sign. I don't think the most surprising sign. I feel like we've been on a good trend for these uh, game shows for the most part, um, and Fallout looks looks like awesome i cannot wait making the fans happy so yeah. um I, I will say as a as not a fan of fallout not that i'm not a fan of it i just haven't really played it or anything so i don't know looking at this i'm like it's not doing enough to make me be like i need to watch this show but wow, it's really? also not making me look at it and be like man this like oh i don't know about this i'm like no i think this this is probably gonna work so yeah as a fallout fan i look at this and i'm like i cannot fucking wait to start this and get into it Let's yeah see, I, I hope it lives up to it i think it will again it looks like this is great. I'd love some stories from the wasteland. I'd love a Fallout 5, but I know I'll be, Ben will be in college by the time I get that, apparently. Uh, I'm just stoked to see what's up with it. Yeah, and get in there. And so, yeah, the fact that they're doing more is great. But the tax credits are great. I think as a country, the United States has slept on that in a lot of different ways. I, of course, default to gaming, where we've seen Canada eat our fucking lunch. The fact that it is so easy to be an independent developer in Canada because, of course, you can get a tax credit or you can get a, uh, the government to fund your video game, let alone healthcare is free. So it's so easy to be up there. And that's why the indie scene in Montreal is exploding the way it is, let alone across the country. But right there, it's like I look at us as America not being able to get our shit together on that. And granted, I look at America and see us not get our shit together on a lot of things. Yeah. But it's like, especially for our industry, it's always like, fuck, man, I wish you could figure that out. I wish you could look at Chicago and be like, they are doing something special here and making a hub for it. any city, but just, you know what I mean? Like there's money on the table there, Yeah. but I digress. I can't wait for fallout. And this is kind of a different conversation. Yeah, definitely. Definitely interesting. I'm, I'm again, I'm excited that we're at a point that game IP uh, is being treated correctly in other mediums because we've wanted this forever and yep. not everybody wants it, but a lot of us do. And I feel like this is uh, a very, very great turning point that at this point it's turned. Like at this point, I feel like going into these, uh, movies or tv shows i am assuming they're going to be at least good i'm not assuming they're bad i'm also not assuming they're going to be amazing but yeah. I, i'm assuming at least good uh in a way that i feel we didn't really get on the superhero scene until the dark knight trilogy iron man time where it's like oh i assume that a superhero movie is going to be at least good whereas before then it was like mm. you assume bad and if it's good you're going to be so damn impressed right yeah and i think that we are well past that um so it's great it is great, ladies and gentlemen, just like the Kind of Funny membership is. Of course, if you're a Kind of Funny member, you get each and every episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily ad-free. You get all our other shows ad-free. You get the ability to watch us record the afternoon podcast live as you record them, just like the Kind of Funny podcast this afternoon. And, of course, you get the daily multimedia extravaganza known as Greg Way. But you're not using your Kind of Funny membership benefits right now. So here's a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Factor. Eat stress-free this spring with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. A ton of us here at Kind of Funny have been so thankful for Factor since we've been in the new studio, and you can too. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also, discover more than 60 add-ons every week, like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and fuel up your springtime goals. Get chef-prepared meals on the table in two minutes with Factors ready-to-eat meals so you can get back to doing what you love 
this spring. Head to factormeals.com slash kindoffunny50 and use code kindoffunny50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code kindoffunny50 at factormeals.com slash kindoffunny50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. This episode is brought to you by Dragon's Dogma 2. Dragon's Dogma 2 is the highly anticipated action RPG successor to the cult classic Dragon's Dogma, released in 2012. Dragon's Dogma 2 boasts a richly detailed and deeply explorable fantasy world created using immersive physics, character AI, and the latest in graphics from Capcom's RE Engine. This single-player action RPG challenges players to use their creativity and curiosity to shape their own experience. The world of Dragon's Dogma 2 revolves around choice. Both your party of pawns and enemies alike will react dynamically to your actions on the battlefield, whether you cling to the backs of monsters or seek to dispatch them from afar. Whether you like melee combat, shooting bows and spells, scaling enormous monsters, or using your environment to your advantage, Dragon's Dogma 2 has some for you and the character creator is easy to use with a ton of customizability to get as creative as you want so go to dragonsdogma.com to buy the game and start your epic quest today this episode's brought to you by robin hood did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement you can still have an ira robin hood has the only ira that gives you a three percent boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to robin hood gold but get this now through april 30th robin hood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a three percent match that's right no cap on the three percent match robin hood gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their ira with a three percent match this offer is good through april 30th get started at robinhood.com slash boost subscription fees apply and now for some legal info claim as of q1 2024 validated by radius global market research investing involves risk including loss limitations apply to iras at 401ks three percent match requires robinhood gold for one year from the date of first three percent match must keep robinhood ira for five years the three percent matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions robinhood ira available to u.s customers in good standing robinhood financial llc member sipc is a registered broker dealer Number three on the rope report. Hell Divers 2 sales are outpacing Spider Man 2 in the UK. This is Andy Robinson at VGC. Hell Divers 2 was the UK's best selling game for the second consecutive month in March. That's according to GSD, data published by GI.biz, which tracks all physical sales and digital sales from most major publishers. According to GSD, after eight weeks, Hell Divers, Hell Divers 2 sales are now trending ahead of where Spider Man 2 was after the same length of time. Parentheses, though it should be noted that the later retails for £70 and isn't on PC, period. Hell fuck that. Fuck that yeah. information. We're taking the win. Take the win. Dude, so freaking cool, man. Like, I can't talk enough about Hell Divers 2 just Me being either. like such a amazing story. Yeah. Of just like what, yeah. what a great success that they really needed. And I. It's just so funny that after all the shit talk we have done about PlayStation's live service strategy, Helldivers 2 is a success. It makes you really excited for fair games. It doesn't. For it marathon. Doesn't. It doesn't. But uh, shout out to them. I just love that it can happen. And I, I keep saying this too, like seeing the way that they have evolved this game with social media and seeing the way that they put out the updates and have people actually excited and even me as an outsider seeing it all happen and understanding big things are going down and then pushing the level cap like yeah. it just seems like such a great example of oh they did the thing that everyone else seems to be failing at in trying to emulate people that created the thing of the Fortnites and things like that so it's very damn cool to see especially for an ip like hell divers that is now an ip yeah, you yeah. know, this, it now has lore and it now has things that people care about. That's awesome. Yeah, we are 19 days removed from my birthday, mm -hmm. and I want my birthday stream to be Hell Divers, but I want it. To, I don't know what that means. Ooh. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. Kevin? Because what I'd like to do is do like one of your stupid. I don't mean you stupid, but I mean one of the crazy. Let's stream for 12 hours thing and just play Hell Divers. Yeah. You know what I mean? I love that. But yeah, but I got Ben and Jen. You know what I mean? It's hard ah, to do. I Jen's on a work trip right before my birthday, so I'd have to do it probably after my birthday. Mm. Me and Kevin, we need to put our heads together on this. All right, let's let's set up a meeting. I was gonna I'm say, ready. you know what? I, we should probably. Uh, this is a we, we should expense in and out, and you and me should put our heads together on this. Kevin, ah, the fabled in and out dinner lunch. <laughs>
Just why do you have to take your lunch at 2.30? It's so late. I'm hungry. I mean, you say the word. I'll leave these kids. Michael burned the place down. Uh, Hell Divers, yeah, the success of it, insane. Just to see it going, yeah, the level cap. Like, I don't know how many more times we can pat it on the back. You know what I mean? These so numbers, far though, and away my game of the year. I think it's great that it's like not only are we patting on the back, but like the, the people showing up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, 100%. Like that was, you know, when we were in the throes of Ghostbusters, when I was like, see, everybody, this is what I'm used to. Something I love comes out. It's a small group likes it, and then everybody else hates it, and I don't know what's right or wrong anymore. And when Helldivers is out, I'm like, I don't know what to fucking do. The game I love and have loved for nine years is great and popular now, and yeah. people are making TikToks about it. I don't know what to do with this. How do you like something that's successful? I'm not aware. <laughs> that is very funny. That's, that's not a Greg that Miller. A that's not what Greg you, yeah. has to do. That's not Greg's life. You know what yeah. I mean? So, goddamn, Kevin, I can't wait to get back to the front. Kevin, now, are you only playing on stream, or do you play ever on your own? Right now, I only have time to play on stream. Yeah. Off screen, I'm, I'm doing a bunch of other stuff. So I do want to get to the point. I have one friend <coughs> who is playing, and it's like I want to hit him up and be like, hey, just me and you, let's do this. But I just haven't had the time or the setup to get that happening yet. Mm. We'll see. Everything's changing. There's always something. <laughs> We've beaten the automatons, but what does that mean? We'll find out. We'll have to find out. Number four. Apple opens the App Store to retro game emulators. This is Emma Roth at The Verge. Apple is loosening its App Store restrictions and opening the marketplace up to retro game emulators. In an update Friday, Apple announced that game emulators can come to the App Store globally and offer downloadable games. Apple says those games must comply with all applicable laws, though, an indication it will ban apps that provide pirated titles. The move should allow the retro console emulators already on Android, dash dash, at least those that are left, dash dash, to bring their apps to the iPhone. Game emulators have long been banned from iOS, leaving iPhone owners in search of workarounds via jailbreaking or other workarounds. Uh, they're also one of the key reasons so far that iPhone owners in the European Union might check out third-party app stores now that they're allowed to in the region. Apple's change today could head that off. I am so excited about this, Greg. Okay. This sounds like some dream come true shit that we'll have to wait and see how it actually plays out. Um, obviously, Android has been able to do a lot of this stuff for a long time, but I am in the iOS ecosystem. But, yeah, who wants to be an Android person? Uh, the green bubbles. Get out of here. They like them bubbles, Greg. Um, they also like flexibility. Um, but I like the do quality the of the screens and uh, all the, the, the very, very, very high quality shit that I got going on. I'm not saying they don't have it, but I'm saying I do here. And I hate how limited I have been in certain ways. Sure. Um, but what I get excited about here, Greg, is the iPad. Oh. The big old iPad. Yeah. Rumored OLED coming later this year. But even without the OLED, it's the whatever they call it, X, XR, whatever the fuck. Um, beautiful, beautiful screen there. The, and very powerful machine as well. Um, the one that I think you have, the the big dog, um, tw like twelve. I forget what one. number it is. Yeah. yeah, I have the big iPad. Yeah. But um, imagine bringing that with you and being able to play any game you want. Now I know your old game is old type guy, so like that's not necessarily the most exciting. My, that's thing my to thing. You. So to so to, to, to pull over on the the mm -hmm. side of the road here, everybody. If you're driving a car, I urge you to do the same thing. Go to the shoulder and listen to me for a second. If it's a one lane road, just stop. Put on your blinkers. I read this, and then the Apical Laws bit, and I'm like, okay, so what the hell would I be emulating? Like, what's actually enjoyable? I'm not going to be playing Mario out here, right? Well, so here's the thing. Greg. Am I going to be able to play Ghostbusters on the Master System here? They're, they, they, they're providing you the emulators. They're just not providing you the ROMs. Okay. So they're not, they're not, if they have ROMs come with it, then they're going to get in trouble. And so this is like banned. a nesticle situation. Uh, yeah, that yes, hundred percent. Nesticle back in the day. Uh, yes, that that is an, an emulator. Yeah. Um, and so, but that's the thing is like, if they were to put that with Mario 3 ROMs, then they get in trouble. Okay. But they just have the emulator. You need to pro provide your own ROMs that you need to get legally. Wink, wink. So how would I upload the... It's the same thing as um, if you own music that you bought and you can play it on your Apple Music, like iTunes. Yeah. But you could also get illegal stuff and put it in there. It's okay. the same idea. So the idea then, I would download the app that is Nesticle or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then... Inside of that, what is this? So I funny? just love the <laughs> Nesticle is just such a moment in time emulator, but also just <laughs> logo look like balls. It Get it like testicle, testicle, you know yeah. what I mean? uh, and then I would open it up, and there'd be like a thing of like upload your build here or upload your ROMs. ROM here. Yeah, there'd be like a folder that you put these things <gasps> into, um, okay. legally or illegally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Allegedly, you know? allegedly. But yeah, it's. Uh, I imagine because it is Apple, it's not going to be as straightforward as you'd like, unless you have a Mac, and then it's going to be very simple. 
um, to be able to just file transfer, airdrop, boom. They're there. Um, so, yeah. Okay, I'm that's fun. That's exciting. That you actually did turn me around on that. Yeah. Because allegedly, if I can play real Ghostbusters, if I can play Ghostbusters on their match mm-hmm. system, I'm allegedly excited. Yeah, and so that's the thing is I, I feel like the... I have been very impressed with how well the iOS devices, iPad and iPhone, have worked with like just a dual sense. So it's like in theory, you bring your iPad, you bring your dual sense on a plane, you can play whatever the hell you want. Yeah. With a big old screen that's beautiful and it, it's a powerful ass machine too. So it's going to be able to run it very well. Um, so yeah, exciting stuff. There's, okay. you know, a lot of people have Steam decks too. So it's they like yeah, I, yeah. at what point it's like, do, do they need this? <clears throat> you don't. But if you already have it, it's a cool feature to have. And there are use cases for me that I'm like, well, I'd rather use the dual sense where I can actually get all the bells and whistles of the dual sense controller too. Sure. Uh, with this, which is just cool and fun. Okay. Okay. Old game is old, but I, I respect you. I, mm-hmm. I want you to have fun out there, but old games can be new again, Greg. Sure. Thanks I to guess. game preservation. Thanks to Sarah bond. She's out there. I and mean, also all the, the hard work in modders and stuff out there to do the work on the emulator side. Number five. Atlas leaker seemingly confirms wild Persona 6 fan theory. This is Ryan Dinsdale at IGN.com. The Persona series is known for its bold art direction, with each modern game boasting its own distinct style. And a new leak now appears to confirm a wild fan theory based on how Persona 6 will work. Look, I screwed it up. I'm about to cough. Hold on. Midori, an established leaker of Persona developer Atlas, posted on Twitter uh, that the, quote, color theme for Persona 6 is green. This comes in comparison to Persona 3 having a blue theme, Persona 4 having a yellow theme, and Persona 5 having a red theme. While this is perhaps inconsequential at first glance, this leak, if true, also confirms a wild theory Persona fans have been spinning for the past two years. Artwork released as part of the franchise's 25th anniversary celebration in 2022 showed all the Persona protagonists standing against a graffitied wall. The framing of the characters had them stand just a tad off center, the spa- uh, and space for another character was instead taken up by a tub of green paint, uh, despite the wall having a very, very little green on it. This sparked the fan theory that Persona 6, which Atlas hasn't said a word about officially, would have a green art style. What a wild theory. The more I read it, I was like, what the fuck is this bullshit story I'm reading right now? You know I love I mean? it. I love it. I mean, yeah, it's, hey, yeah, cool. God bless you with the grip, but I mean, like, at, number five, wild. Atlas Leaker seemingly confirms wild Persona 6 fan theory. Whoa. <laughs> this is why, you know, this is why I avoid conversations with Baron. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because uh-huh. this is the kind of shit this guy's talking. He's going to get that green bucket tattooed on his arm next day. You know what I mean? He's going to, dude. Yeah, this, I mean, whatever. I like the Persona has their little color themes. <laughs> yeah, of course. Know? It's fun. Um, And yeah, that, that essentially confirmed it. Um, But back in the day, so I love that there's now a leaker being like, yeah, it's great. It's like, good for you, Midori. Good for you. Crushed it. Crushed yeah. it. Good job. And again, yeah, I mean, I know to the audience, it's a big deal. Like, you want to nerd out about some WWE character getting leaked when I get it, but it's you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. still comical. I just love the wi- wild theory is the only thing that it's a wild theory. You know what I mean? It's like, I feel like it's like the most tame theory I've ever seen. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, they're yeah. spelling it out. Like looking at that, I'd be like, yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah, cool. It's, yeah. He's going to be green. Mm-hmm. Great. Good for you. Good for you. Anyways. Did one and two have colors? Black and white. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. I don't, I don't know. Hmm. I mean, they talked about modern ones in here when they were talking about, you want to hear a wild theory? Persona seven one. purple. Oh, calling shit. it now remember this moment everybody until i see the bucket yeah i don't believe it can't know that's you know why I mean? it makes it wild though greg oh well then what does it make this one tame <laughs> they had the bucket they knew they did kevin i digress <sighs> tim mm-hmm. i'm sick of all these big stories if i wanted something smaller say the tiniest news i needed to know about where would i go you go to our last story the we news channel where we cover all the small news items you need to know about there's no better transition in games daily than, or any kind of funny than this. Number six, the Wii News. From VGC, two upcoming PlayStation Plus classics have been seemingly leaked. Medieval and Star Wars Rebel Assault 2 The Hidden Empire are going to be on the PlayStation Plus catalog t- soon. Uh, I don't pa- even know that, what game that is. Star, Star Wars, Wars colon, Rebel, Rebel Assault 2 colon, The Hidden Empire. Is that one of the like X-Wing type games? Mm-hmm. Palia developer Singularity 6 has laid off 35% of its staff. That sucks, and that's a lot of people. Uh, From VGC, Sonic the Hedgehog co-creator Yuji Naka 
ended a 16-month social media blackout on Sunday by accusing top Dragon Quest producer Yu Miyaki of lying as part of Naka's uh, high-profile insider trading trial. Last year, Naka was sentenced to 30 months in prison, suspended for four years, and given two fines, totaling $1.2 million. After he pled guilty to buying shares based on inside information during his time working at Publisher Square Enix. This is, uh, normally Barrett would bring up a picture of Sonic in jail uh, on the wall for this one, but but yeah, I love the ongoing drum dramatics, Greg, of the Yuji yeah, Naka story. He ended a 16-month social. Now that's a wild story. That's a wild that's story, wild. everybody. Wild. God. And that's it. That's all the Wii news you had for you. Bop, 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 oh. And then it's sad when it's over. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's such a nice little moment. Star Wars Rebel Assault 2, the Hidden Empire. <laughs> can I can I tell you what that's like? Because it triggers something, and I was trying to trace it back. No spoilers, except uh, to say that there's like a cliffhanger there we go. to what I'll talk about in a second. Bluey. Uh -huh. I know you don't watch Bluey. Uh -huh. You should. Yeah. Because it is a show I way more for it. adults than the kids or whatever. Blah, blah. They're doing this thing where all of a sudden they're like, not all of a sudden, but they're like, hey, two new episodes are coming out. Normal episode called Ghost Basket on this weekend, right? And next week. And Bluey episodes are like eight minutes long every mm, time. Mm. And then next weekend, we're doing a like 26 minute episode, like a full episode of TV or whatever, right? The sign. Yeah, thank you so much. And so everybody's like, okay, cool. So yesterday I was like, hey, Ben, let's watch the new episode of Bluey or whatever. And he's like, I want to watch people playing with trucks. I'm like, I fucking know. It's all you ever want to watch and it sucks. We're watching an episode of Bluey, then you can watch your fucking trucks. So we watched it and it is a normal. Bluey episodes are always designed to make you cry as a parent or mm -hmm. whatever and like, mm -hmm. make, or and also as a child or whatever, but like Ben doesn't get the themes and whatever. This whole episode goes, it's beautiful, it's really good and then there's this final frame that literally was like a what? the fuck like what and not only that it then then it cuts to credits and there's no music and there's usually like music through bluey credits they are they are fucking artists at making you feel i love and it, it was like so, like that's how it feels when the wee music ends for yeah. the wee news where it's like wow. you're like what i can't what i want to know what this is you can tell me later. i'll tell you I offline i don't want to do it for everybody because yeah. yeah and it's like you like again it's like jen wasn't in the room so when she came i was like do you want to know what the fuck just happened she's like should i watch it i'm like when are you gonna have time to watch it Ben is not going to allow you to watch this again right now. He just saw it. He's not, you know what I mean? He's yeah. already watching the trucks now. Yeah. Handyman uh, Hal's with a monster truck. We can't stop this. Shout out to Handyman Hal, though. I don't know who that is. You don't know Handyman Hal? You shouldn't know Handyman Hal. Handyman Hal is a YouTube. You know Miss Rachel? Yeah. Okay. Handyman Hal's like a Miss Rachel. Mm. He's over in South Carolina. He, he dresses as a handyman and like teaches Told you stuff this. and does yeah. all this stuff. He's really cool. I did, he did a cameo for yeah, Handyman is. Howe. Handyman Howe. He did a, a cameo for I me for Christmas. Howie Mandel, Christmas. but like a little weird. Howie Mandel. Bobby's yeah. World. Yeah. It's generic or generic. That's Handyman yeah, Howe right yeah, there. Yeah. He's very nice. Good for him. Great, great cameo. Awesome trucks. Uh, you know, you do a cameo, you're not sure what you're going to get. Send back like a three minute video talking to Ben yeah. about trucks and everything. Cool. Good guy. I like Handyman Howe. I don't know him personally, so inevitably when it finds out there's a fucking <laughs> tortured cat in his basement, I didn't fucking know. I just say I like it, all right? <laughs> We've been down this road before. That sucks. <laughs> we also aren't assuming that he did anything wrong. I don't fucking know, guys, all right? I don't sh I don't know shit about shit anymore. Oh, my God. Uh, let's check in on the Super Chats. Remember, of course, to be part of Kind of Funny Games Daily. You can super chat on YouTube and get written in over here. Uh, Kebab says, I think 40 frames per second VRR modes aren't used enough by devs. That's the thing. There is this like very interesting middle ground. I mean, even the 14. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Yeah. Just people catching up. A good man taking out all his evil on a cat. So what he said. <laughs> Oh my God! Um, <laughs> there's the middle ground of like 1440p resolution. That is a dramatic step up from yeah. 1080p. Uh, and I think it, like most people, like all the the sickos out there, they're like, "Yo, it's 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 good. Like that's really good." And I just feel like that's a harder sell because people know what 4K is and TVs are sure, 4K. Sure, sure, sure. Like you can get uh, monitors that are 1440p, but that just doesn't have the the like, household ring to it. Um, and so I think because of that, it's going to be a, a tough sell for people, and it's always going to feel inferior to what they know the potential is. Fair enough. Uh, Mike L. gave us a, a, a YouTube uh, Super Chat fan funding and said, paying my birthday tax. Thanks, kind of funny. That is an old, Hell yeah. old Colin and Greg Live kind of funny morning show bit. And I appreciate Amazing. that, Mike L. Thank you very much. And then <laughs> Happy birthday. 
Kuma Babam, uh, or Babam, uh, membered up again and says, acknowledge the story. And we will be acknowledging oh, will. the story very shortly. We will. Uh, right as that we were about to, I was about to wrap that up. We got another one in here from Keenan who writes in and gives us a super chat. Says, yo, Greg, we met in van. I think it's Vancouver years ago. I haven't been in many vans. Mm-hmm. And I think I'd remember Keenan from a van. Uh, I also bought the Roosevelt's Bluey shirt after seeing the one on you, Greg. Me and the kids love Bluey and Roosevelt's. Ha ha ha. Roosevelt's still doing great work. A lot of great wrestling shirts. When I was at Ma- when I was at Mania, when I was running around WWE Live, lots of great Roosevelt shirts there. People were wearing. Jealous of a lot of them. Yeah, I wish they would do long sleeves. Yeah, I could go for that too. I mean, that's you know, make your name. You, you, you get the revenue, you get the profits, then reinvest in more fabric, make longer sleeves. That's how it works. That's yeah. how it is. That's yeah. the big yeah. problem. That's right probably, now. well, you know, costs a lot. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's a lot. I mean, think about that. Every shirt has that much more fabric. Mm-hmm. Then you get into some people got long arms, some people got short arms. Yeah. That's always one of my big problems. You know what I mean? What's, what's the problem for you? Oh, I'm an awkwardly sized individual, right? So mm-hmm. I get it. And so it's like sometimes my arms are too, the short, the sleeves will be too short for what I'm wearing. You but have long if, arms. Is that your problem? I mean, I'm a huge man. Yeah, I got long arms. I got a big old fat belly. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, you know, I was talking about dick. I, th- I thought you were going there. I thought Average you were going dick, there. Don't worry about yeah. it. it. Ain't nothing yeah. crazy. No, I, mean, I ain't writing home about it. You know what I mean? Great. But your long arms. Though. <laughs> God, why? I can't wait for you to have useless balls. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're still, you know, hope for that thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Still got a a month. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No? I did a Greg way about this. Uh It was my big uh, vasectomy update where I came home and told, because remember, I I went to the vasectomy appointment, then came here and did the podcast with you guys. Mm -hmm. Uh Then I went home and told Jen all the same information, and she had all these follow-up questions. She's like, but why would they do this? And what about, no, you're not doing this. We're going to find you. We're going to get a second opinion. We're going to get a better doctor. I was like, okay. So I'm not, that that date, I'm still loaded. Doctors, I'm still loaded. All right. God. All right, this is leaded gasoline I'm shooting over here. Beware, everybody. <laughs> Cover, your Cover your this. eyes. Cover your eyes. Cover your eyes. You two uh. ninjas for a video game show, didn't you, everybody? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not sorry. <laughs> I think you're the problem. Keep the cats away from this guy. <laughs> oh, man. No, that's the best thing about me. You've seen it all for 17 years. Yeah. Think about it. What could they tell you? <laughs> Breathe, what could they tell you at this point? Hold on, hold on. I need you to- wake up <laughs> and on new rock stars, if that still exists, there's a fucking headline about Greg Miller. What would it be? What would it possibly be that you would read and go like, that's out of character? You know that that new rock stars is the same new rock stars that does all the, like Eric Voss and them? No. Yeah. From back in the day, the uh-huh. tube filter. <laughs> <laughs> You're going through it right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's just well, I'm laughing like the laughs where the cough lives. Uh huh. It's where it lives. That's so unfortunate for everybody. I, know, I, I need it. to bring something up though. Oh, it's it's no, very no, important, no, no, no. Kevin. We cannot end the show <laughs> until I bring this up. I'm gonna. He's dying. He's Look fucking dying. It sucks, dude. This cough just been sperm. hanging. Yeah, exactly. Oh my yeah. lord, we gotta Damn. get it out he of needs him. Needs to absorb it back into his That's body. That's a great point, Kevin. Because yeah, today I broke down and bought cough syrup and I drank oh, it in the car. I'm really happy. That's where that sentence went. I broke. I drank it in the car and it was like it's an expectorant. You know what I mean? Which is uh-huh. going to get it out of you, too. Maybe not only is he getting this out, Kevin, it's bringing this up, too. Yeah. Eric Myers, um, who, who always does amazing work, um, sometimes fucks up and, like, creates absolute horrors. Oh, okay. uh, and he did that this weekend because he tweeted, me randomly to myself last night, what if four Game Over Greggies podcasted together? But again, you sick fucks would tune in for it. You like it. You f- you fund this. You make this happen. We can stop it, Kevin. I don't want to. <laughs> I have the laugh of an angel. You know, Miller, how do you feel about maybe interviewing yourself at some point? I've thought about it a lot. I can't do it. Like honestly, God, Kevin, what a great question. This is, I, I, this is another in that meeting. I've thought about this so many times of how cool it would be to be able to go back in time. In interview versions of myself, but then have to like neuralize them, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And get their reactions to shit. And I haven't gone much further beyond that, but if we can figure out how to do it, you know what I mean? Have you seen the. Because like guy. when I was a kid, I did this one thing where I took a Dixie cup and put a straw in it and then put gum around it to drain the water. And I drew a little diagram before I did it. And my mom was very impressed that I did that, right? So I feel like right now I have the idea to interview myself, right? 
but I just don't have the diagram. the diagram. Yeah. <laughs> This cop Ray. makes it so much worse. Also, why do you have multiple horrifying Dixie Cup stories? Yeah. There's so many. There's so many. Greg, how would you feel about interviewing a very drunk you? We record. I, and I've seen this happen. Someone did this Rooster on. Teeth. It was Rooster Teeth? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Uh, so they did it, and but we can use the wall. So you're sitting there. What happens first? Do I write the questions and then get drunk, or do I get... <laughs> <laughs> do I get drunk and you guys ask me questions and then I ask the question? I would love to do both. Have sober Greg interview drunk Greg and then have drunk Greg interview sober. Now that's great. Yeah. Get me to the blackout period. Oh, you know what uh, I mean? Uh, but that's another one I've done. You know what I mean? Thought about. It. Mm -hmm. For all the times I blacked out, like, you know what I mean? In, in college or whatever, IGN too. Like, a little bit of kind of funny. Like, I don't, there's never like a... I don't know if there's ever a moment where you're like, I'm blacked out. You know what I mean? Like, I won't remember this in the morning kind of thing. I think I would need... I think by definition, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tim, you'd have to be there to be like, he's not going to remember this. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then that would probably get me angry, and I'd be like, I'm going to remember it now. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, I'll kill you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Tim, us just doing that, like the side where you're sober, interviewing drunk you on a Friday, then... In the later, uh, when you're drunk, we it, we we set up the interview questions that you have to come up with while you're drunk. Sure. And then come back on Monday, and then have that version of you on the wall talking to sober you. Yeah, I love it. That's good. That's good. The other thing that's been he sobers up. You know? Jen off. Jen sent me something that she wants to do. Of and of course it was just like. A tape recorder but interviewing ben every year on his birthday yeah and i, I was like this because she sent some video some or whatever uh tiktok somebody done that I'm like yeah we're not gonna do it like lame like this we'll bring him in we'll, here we'll, we'll make yeah. him sit here you know what yeah, i mean yeah, yeah. yeah that'll be that one really awkward one where it goes from like 13 to 14 and it's like we go from the nice studio to being like in an apartment because this finally blew up wow because again no. not something i did no i could do anything but it's like you find out roger's got a cat in his basement <laughs> you know what i mean you know what i mean <laughs> You know, because he Roger's a guy, right? He, you could see him doing it. He's that kind of guy. You know what I mean? Because, like, think about a it. Lot? <laughs> think about it. Like, Roger lost a lot of weight, right? It's suspicious. You know this what I mean? This episode was supposed to end, like, five minutes ago. It's suspicious ago. that Roger what? lost so what? much weight. Like that and very easily. If you told me <laughs> he had done something to the cat, the cat was taking the spirit or something, I'd believe you. The cat was taking the spirit. <laughs> All right, we're going to go. Bye, guys. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that was fun. That was great.